What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 17 beta 8 to registered developers and soon to public beta testers. And just as expected, this comes one week after the release of beta 7. Now along with this iOS release, we also got the eighth beta for iPadOS 17, watchOS 10, tvOS 17, HomePod OS 17, and then we did also get VisionOS beta 3. There was not a new macOS Sonoma beta today because we are on on a different release schedule for Mac OS. That's probably gonna come out later after iOS 17 releases. And then if we take a look at the size of this update, it comes in right around 550 megabytes on my iPhone 14 Pro Max, which came from beta seven. So a slightly smaller update size than what we've seen recently. So if we go ahead and check out the build number, we have another A at the end of the build number here. So we have a 21A5326A. So just like the previous build, we have an A at the end of the build number again, which indicates that we are very close to a final as we've been talking about in the past few videos. And we'll talk about when to expect that in an exact date now near the end of this video. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 17 beta eight? And the first thing I wanna discuss is a really weird issue I've seen multiple people mention now, and that is that Apple has reset the toggles for certain settings. So there are some specific ones. So if we go to our settings, privacy and security, and then location services, multiple people have mentioned that if you go into system services right here, that not only has significant locations turned itself back on if you had it off, but also the product improvement toggles right here for iPhone analytics, routing and traffic and improved maps have all been re-toggled on even though they had those off previously. So if you had those off, you know, you may want to go in here and check and make sure that after updating, it didn't reset these toggles back to their default setting, which is to be on. Now in beta seven, we did have a change to the end call button that was moved to the middle while the keypad is pulled up. So before on beta six, that was moved to the middle when you just like answer a phone call or make a phone call. But when you pulled up the keypad, it was still aligned to the right. But beta seven fixed that and it moved it back to the middle. And I checked again here in beta eight and there is no change. So it looks like Apple is going to stick to keeping that in call button right there in the middle, which I think is a good change. Now, one of the biggest changes last week was the haptic feedback pattern change when you switch to mute. So when you flip your mute switch down to the mute position, you will feel a new haptic feedback pattern on your hand. It's like three consecutive taps whereas before it was different pretty much in every iOS since I can remember. So a lot of people said that that could be hinting at the iPhone 15 Pro action button, basically confirming it. And I would have to agree with that. And also I will say after receiving some iPhone 15 Pro cases recently, I can myself pretty much confirm that the action button is coming on the 15 Pro, but that was already pretty much confirmed anyways. But nonetheless, that has not changed in beta eight. It remains that same pattern that we had in beta seven. If there is a change, it seems a little bit more prominent. But as far as anything else goes, I'm not seeing much here in beta eight. And that's kind of expected, you know, after beta seven or beta six, usually you start to see a slowdown until the RC release and that's when Apple can put in you know things in the code and just other features that may be in the new iPhones or the new Apple Watch, whatever the new products are. They're not going to spoil that by putting it in a beta before their event. Now, taking a look at the release notes, I did want to mention this as well because we do have the beta eight release notes, but I still have the beta seven notes pulled up here and I was kind of looking through them and I have not seen one change from the beta seven release notes. So, you know, keep in mind beta six and seven did patch up a lot of bugs. So that's not necessarily a bad thing that we don't have anything new here in beta eight. You know, I would expect it to be pretty much just as stable as beta seven, but potentially not really any more stable than beta seven was. And that leads me into the next topic, which is the Geekbench score and the overall performance. So you can see I did run a Geekbench test here and I scored a 2639 on the single core and a 6848 on the multi core. And compared to beta seven, where we got a 2645 on the single core, it's slightly lower, but the multi core is slightly higher at 6848 versus 6801. This one right here was a Geekbench test after the initial day of having beta seven installed. So I will do another Geekbench test on Friday when I do the Apple weekly episode. Oh yeah. And by the way, for those asking about the notification bug, if that's still present here, I'll let you, I'll let you figure that out. 
look, yep, we still have that bug. Like I said, that's going to be there till iOS 40. So just don't plan on that getting fixed anytime soon because that's been there for a while now and there's really no sign of it getting fixed in iOS 17 period. And then as far as the battery life goes, again, just like the performance, I would not really expect any change to the battery life. Battery life has actually been pretty good for me so far. And I did notice actually like right when installing this, even after running the Geekbench test, this did not heat up as much as it has in past betas. So I'm not sure if it's just like maybe placebo or if it's just coincidence, but my device is not as warm as it has been in previous betas, especially after running a Geekbench test. So that could, you know, translate well, that could bode well for the performance and the battery life for beta eight, but it's kind of too early to tell. I will let you guys know if anything changes though in my Apple Weekly episode on Saturday. All right, so now let's talk about what to expect next from Apple, because now we have an official release date for the RC build and also a really good guess as to when we can get the final. So Apple announced their iPhone 15 event is going to be on September 12th. And if you guys remember, you know, if you go back like over a month on my channel, that has been the date that we've been predicting here for a while for that Apple event. So it's good to see that come to fruition. So with that being said, I would not expect a release until after that Apple event. Now there's always the possibility that Apple finds something wrong in the software and they push out an RC next week and then an RC2 after the event on the 12th but that seems less likely. So my guess is that we're not gonna see a release at all next week on the week of the 4th, and we will see the RC on September 12th, Tuesday, after the Apple event. And then after that, we should see pre-orders for the iPhone 15 on the 15th, and then we should see them release on the 22nd, which means that iOS 17 will come out at some point on the week of the 18th. Most likely it's gonna be right there on the 18th, but it really could be any day up until the 22nd. And then I did want to briefly touch on the Apple event that just got announced today. So you can see the really cool animation here, and this kind of hints at the colors for the iPhones, but let me talk about that in a second. So you can see there, it's going to be on 9:12 at 10 a.m. Pacific, so 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's gonna be a hybrid event once again, so there are gonna be people live in attendance, but they're just gonna be watching a pre-recorded you know, presentation of the iPhone and everything like that. So it is called Wonderlust, as you can see on the invites. Apple does not show it right here on the actual events page, but looking at the events invite, it does show it is called Wonderlust, and Wonderlust is a deliberate misspelling of Wanderlust. So that could be pretty interesting. I'm not sure what they could be hinting at with that. If you have any theories as to what that could mean, let me know in a comment down below. I can see it meaning maybe like taking pictures with the periscope lens, you know, with the iPhone 15 Pro Max, you're wandering around in, in nature and traveling and taking pictures. I'm not sure. What do you guys think? But I think that the biggest hint in this graphic is going to be for the colors. So you can see very clearly that we have blue throughout this Apple logo that's animating. And I think that hints at the blue iPhone 15 Pro color along with the other colors. So the Titan gray, the space black, and the silver. It looks like that is kind of hinting at that. And also the look of this Apple looks pretty titanium. So that could also be hinting at the materials used for the 15 Pro, kind of confirming that it will be titanium. And by the way, I will be streaming this event live here on my channel. I will be reacting to it with you guys on September 12th. So make sure you are subscribed and make sure to tune into that live stream. It's always fun every single year. But anyways, guys, that is iOS 17 beta eight, a pretty small update, a pretty boring update, honestly, but that's kind of expected, like I mentioned earlier. And then in a couple of weeks, it should be more exciting with the RC because we will have some changes in the code and some probably some additional features in the software as well, if I had to guess. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for more iOS 17 coverage just like this. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.